is VOA News. I'm David Byrd. Both the United States and Iran are signaling that they're stepping back from the brink after Tehran's missile strikes on Iraqi bases housing American forces. We get more from AP's Sagar Megani. Addressing the nation from the White House, the president seemed intent on de-escalating the crisis. Iran appears to be standing down. And while he boasted of America's military might, we do not want to use it. Instead, the president says the U.S. will immediately put new economic sanctions on Iran, which launched the strikes after America killed Tehran's top general, a sequence that brought the two nations closer to all-out war. Sagar Magani at the Pentagon. The Trump administration took its case for killing a powerful Iranian general to Capitol Hill Wednesday, but appeared to change few minds among lawmakers. Republicans like Senator John Kennedy of Louisiana praised the administration's information session. And I'm going to say it again. I think the Ayatollah got the message. He's either a really bad shot or he understands if he spills American blood, he he will receive great vengeance and furious anger. Do we want to do it? No. Democrats, including House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Elliot Engel, complained the briefing was short on details and left them wondering what the president would do next. I have questions. We have questions. I don't think our questions are really are really being answered. Top Trump administration officials have repeatedly stressed that the undisclosed intelligence about imminent threats to Americans in the Mideast required immediate action and that the president would have been negligent not to strike Iran. An update on Wall Street with all three of the major indices closing trading in positive territory. For more, be sure to log on to our website, voanews.com. This is VOA News. The black boxes have been recovered from a Ukrainian airliner that crashed shortly after takeoff from Tehran Airport, killing all 176 people on board. Reuters' Joe Davies reports. The Boeing 737 came down early on Wednesday, shortly after takeoff from Tehran, en route to the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. Its carrier, Ukraine International Airlines, said the plane was only three years old and was last serviced just two days ago. The airline's president offered his condolences to the victims' families. On behalf of our company, I offer deep condolences to family members of the people who were on board. It was one of our best planes with excellent, trustworthy crew. The airline, which until now had an unblemished safety record, said it's doing everything possible to determine the cause. That is Joe Davies of Reuters reporting. The standoff in Congress is deepening over the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump. We get more from AP's Ed Donahue. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he will launch the Senate impeachment trial on his terms. There will be no haggling with the House over Senate procedure. We will not cede our authority to try this impeachment. The House Democrats' turn is over. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has not handed over the two articles of impeachment to the Senate. Democrats want more witnesses. Adam Schiff is chair of the House Intelligence Committee. He says he knows what McConnell is up to. But he is being very consistent on his, his efforts to cover up for the president. Uh, and Weak if the Senate receives the articles of impeachment. Ed Donahue, Washington. Ousted Nissan boss and international fugitive Carlos Ghosn made his first public appearance since a daring escape from Japan where he is wanted on financial mismanagement charges. Reuters' David Doyle has details. In his first public comment since fleeing to Lebanon from Japan, the ousted Nissan boss and international fugitive Carlos Ghosn attempts point-by-point rebuttal of the charges against him aided by internal Nissan company documents, accused Tokyo prosecutors of brutal treatment, and launched a blistering attack on the Japanese authorities and Nissan executives he says conspired against him. These allegations are untrue and I should have never been arrested in the first place. The Tokyo prosecutor's office said Ghosn's allegations completely ignore his own conduct and that one-sided criticism of the Japanese criminal justice system is totally unacceptable. That's David Doyle reporting. At least four people were killed and 15 others injured by a suicide car bomb Wednesday in the center of Mogadishu, Somalia. The Al-Shabaab militant group has claimed responsibility for the attack. For more, visit our website, voanews.com. I'm David Bird, VOA News. No, no.